I welcome you to SASM. Uh, SASM is an assembler that is licensed to the GNU project. First of all, you need to uh, get your free copy of SASM and download from their website. After installing, you'll get something like this. Uh, we'll go to the settings, and uh, these are the three tabs that you, that you would see. Common tab just shows you the interface of uh, the program. So you can see a nicely laid out interface with keyboards, color, and bold, and line numbers. This is what programmers and developers actually uh, love to work in, in such kind of environments. Uh, you can always go to the color tab and and change your scheme of colors if you wish to do so. In the build tab, in the mode we have, uh, the SASM provides you uh, with both modes, 64-bit mode and 32-bit mode. And the assembler, uh, this is a four-in-one assembler. Uh, as you can see, it supports NASM, GAS, FASM, and MASM. NASM, FASM, and MASM are both based on Intel uh, syntax of assembly, and GAS, is based on uh, the GNU supported uh, at syntax of assembly. In this series of lectures, we would concentrate on gas or the at and at assembly syntax. If you click on NASM, you would see some configurations, linking options and assembly options, and you would see assembler path and linker paths. So make sure that these paths are set. And if you go to the folder of NASM, you go to where you install SASM and you go to the folder of NASM you will find this application, uh, this uh, uh, assembler. Uh, similarly, in the linker, if you go to SASM and Mingui, uh, then you will find this GCC uh, application. If you click on gas, similarly, you would have add and T supported assembler in the gas folder. And you, uh, you have the 32-bit version as well as 64-bit version. If you click on the 64-bit version, so you can see that uh, we have uh, 64, uh, um, in the folder 64, we would have the same application in the same assembly. Uh, but we would, uh, for the time being, select Exodus 6, and for the time being, we will still select NASM. So uh, there's one more thing. The, the assembler outputs a file by the name program.org. Uh, if you want to build this file, in your uh, present working directory, you click on this, uh, you check this box. So let's start, we'll click OK. Now here, if I click New, you would see a very clean layout from where you can straight away start writing your program. But just let's, let's suggest, uh, see some uh, things from scratch. Uh, this is the thing, uh, include io.inc. This is required by your, your assembly uh, uh, program. The IO Inc. is basically a set of configurations. It contains certain uh, functions that we would see in future. Uh, then you have sections in assembly, section for, uh, for the data, section for your code, also known as uh, dot text for your text and section for your uninitialized data. This section, this this section is used for initialized data. It, it may contain arrays and strings, etc. Uh, in the text, this is where this is where your your code would reside. And then you have this section where your uninitialized, uninitialized data would reside. Uh, you are encouraged to uh, visit the wiki area of uh, data segment and you would see all these uh, sections that we discussed here so uh, visit the wikipedia for uh, this topic that i highlighted okay so 
now we'll start uh, building the template for, for our assembly uh, code and this template would be used by our other examples as well uh, in this code we don't have an initialized data so we don't need this and we don't have any uh, data as well so uh, we'll just require this section uh, dot text now we need to declare a global variable a global symbol cmail and this is where basically would work so just let's just use uh, xor uh, eax and eax just to make sure that our code runs so we'll click the run button the compile button and uh, the build process uh, is uh, is saying uh, build successfully and the program finished normally right so now uh, we can comment this out now we know that the code is running and we would implement the uh, the simple uh, program that we saw in the in the last lecture so now we need to move as we know uh, we need to move some some value some immediate value to a register ax and we move five into ax uh, because the intel uh, assembly syntax is the destination is on the left side that's why ax lies on the left side and we move uh, similarly we move into bx we move temp right uh, and we add bx into ax again we move uh, 20 uh, we move into bx an immediate value of 20 and we add bx and ax and put the result in ax because by convention the destination is on the left side uh, and we execute okay so build successfully and the program finally uh, the, the program finished normally right so uh, now we must be also interested uh, we would be interested in uh, in executing our program in the debugging mode to see all the registers and the values being assigned and this kind of uh, view right so uh, this is we are in the debugging mode uh, with an exception of one edition of, of a new instruction by the debugger for correct debugging we'll come back to this but for now just uh, just see the command that says that move ESP into EBP. So now essentially, uh, these are the base uh, base pointer and the stack pointer. So these are the two uh, registers that mark the 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 the, the location of stack. So uh, through these registers, we basically access the stack segment. Uh, now. By this command makes uh, ESP and EBP point to the same location of stack. And let's execute. We have two options: uh, step over and step in. We'll uh, use the step over. Uh, and now this uh, instruction, when this gets executed, so on the left side, on the right side, we have all the registers: like AX and ECX, EDX and EBX. And we will see the values getting changed in these uh, registers. Step over uh, five should go to AX, and we can see that five uh, is in, is already in AX. In BX, we have A, which is a hexa representation of ten. Uh, since we are addressing only the BX. Uh, we don't care about uh, the rest of the bytes, the rest of the uh, uh, registers, locations. We add, and the result should be 15, and 15 is placed in AX. We see 15, the hexadecimal for 15 is F. Uh, we move 20 into BX, and 20 is, one, is 14. And we add them again, that should give us 35, and the result should go to 
AX and hexadecimal of 35 is 23 and it returns. Now just uh, pay some attention and if we change the AX by EA, EAX, then we would be considering the whole uh, register instead of just a 16 bit. EAX, uh, there is an error. Yes, because uh, the width of operations, uh, the width of registers in any operation must be the same. Okay, so EBX, EBX. This was an error that we had and successfully uh, built the program finish normally. We go to the debug mode as uh, last time and we start the program again. Uh, we step over and we get a five in, into EAX and we get a 10 into EBX. So now if you see that we are treating EBX as a whole. Uh, in the last example, we were uh, treating only the 16 bits uh, of the EBX. So therefore, the most significant uh, byte bytes were having some other values. So uh, we don't have this problem in here. So 20 is transferred to EBX and 14 uh, is the hexadecimal of 20 and step over again and the result should be uh, uh, 23 hexadecimal which is 35 and the term. Hopefully uh, this is the first uh, example that we ran on Sesame. Uh, I'll see you later.